Shalom, all Israel, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahusha, Bashim Hakadash. The one that said, I was just GMS, Ruru, 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 I was just GMS, uh, people are dying from sicknesses. Um, this time to remember the Creator, man. It's time to remember the Lord. It's time to um, to appreciate the things we have and appreciate that we're blessed. Okay, and and, and the understanding of of the Lord's judgment. You see, that's the times we're living in, and to prepare ourselves for the coming kingdom of heaven. So this is Ecclesiastes twelve and one. Remember now, thou Creator, in the days of thy youth. Yeah, you're supposed to remember. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, which is the God of the Hebrews, because we Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible, the chosen seed of the Most High. You're supposed to remember the Lord in these times, in the days of our youth. Why? While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Why are you supposed to remember the Creator? How do you remember Him? Keep His law, statutes, commandments to the best of your abilities. Keep in the faith, be brotherly. Charitable, okay, doing all the things that please the Lord, okay, even though it seems simple, uh, it, it, you should be doing it, okay, studying, praying always, uh, and giving thanks and being grateful for the things we have. Why? Because with the Lord, it's nothing for Him to give us these things, it's nothing for the Lord to do good by us, okay, whether it be good or bad. We appreciate everything that happens, and that's the mentality you're supposed to be in. A servant, a servant of the Lord. You see, because any king, when he has his servants, don't do his servants bad because he appreciates his servants' work. But but the servants need to appreciate what our king does for us. You see, so we got to remember him. Why why the Lord said, "I have no pleasure in them." You see, and we know in these times, man. It, it, it's beneficial. It's benefits. Like a job, you might get a job and you'd be like, oh, it's great benefit. It's benefits to serving the Lord. Let's get another scripture. This is Matthew 6 and 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth. Right, man? You could be storing all the money, investing or, or whatever you have. You might be a business owner. Scriptures say, lay not up for your treasures. Lay, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust do corrupt, right? Because I think the scriptures also say money makes wings and fly away. Depending on your dollar you got in your pocket, whether you want to stun on somebody or want to buy a nice car because I want to show off. All that, all that could disappear tomorrow. The scriptures say that's vanity. Moth, moth and rust do corrupt. Esau could come and take it. Or you might have a bill you might have to pay. Or you lose a job or your source of income when you're making all that money. What's the real riches? Where's the real wealth? It says, and where thieves break through and steal, right? Because that's that's what happens. A thief might come in and rob you, take your watch or take take your car or, or see hell, even Esau. Esau the biggest thief. Esau take a house from you, fire you for no reason. But it said, but the scriptures say, but verse twenty, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Right, man. The treasures, the treasures of our faith, should be, should be, in the heavens, man. In the serving of the Lord, in the faith of the Lord. Now, how about you, man? Outside, the Father through His Son. That's where our treasures and our faith shall lie. With the Father, through His Son. Because we know that it's everlasting glory. And, and, and reward for our works in times of uncertainty like, like how we are now. You see? Let's get another scripture. Let's bring, um, bring it out. This is Proverbs 11, verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. Right? Like I said, once again, you can have all the money in the world, all the little wings or Surrey Lanes or Takashis and the famous people, Bill Gates, all all of them, 
all the rich and wealthy of this world, scriptures say, it profits it profits you nothing in the day the Most High comes to visit you. You see, what profits you? But what it say? But righteousness delivereth from death, man. And there's plenty of times, man, I could have died, and I'm not saying I'm righteous, but you know we all strive for perfection. There's plenty of times, plenty of times where. I could have been dead, man. I could have died. Something bad could have happened to me, but I've always been delivered, man. I, I, a quick testimony. The day I got kicked out, my, my father kicked me out the house. Um, I had to sleep in a basement for upwards to one night, man. And then, you know, the Lord blessed me the way I got moved in to a, a pretty nice hotel. And I didn't have to pay nothing. You know, all expense paid. So, righteousness delivereth from death. Righteousness deliver deliver from bad times, man. You gotta look you gotta look at the relationship with the Lord as an invest as an investment. We're investors, you see. What we what we put in is what we get back. Okay? When we do good to our brother, brother up tight, brother might might need money. We give that brother money or what the scriptures say in Deuteronomy, turn out that heart against uh, a a poor brother within thy gates that's in need. And give him freely for what thy have. Then show where the Lord bless thee in all thy works. You see? So so the Lord looks at those things, man, when we when we feed when we feed a brother, or we clothe a brother, or, or we, we house him. If he's uptight, we give him money. We pray for that brother. The the Lord looks at that with, with great honor and esteem. And, and the Lord best believe he counts that and he jots it down to reward us later. Or things that we might need, the Lord will fix it. Remember, man, the Heavenly Father, how about you, man? How about you, There's nothing for him to make these things possible. And that's why he's going to make us a beautiful nation, you see? Kings and priests. Because there's nothing to the Lord to make this happen. You see? We're reading on, it says, uh, verse 5, The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his ways, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteous of the upright should deliver them, but transgressors should be taken by their own naughtiness. And that's that's straight into the point, man. I got another one, man. This is Ecclesiasticus. This is Ecclesiasticus. Man, Ecclesiastes 18, verse 8. And this is a heavy chapter, man. Sirach, this is in the Apocrypha, which the Apocrypha means sent away. Why? Because Esau took certain books out the Bible. And this is one of them, Sirach. And there's a lot of be beautiful sayings in Sirach, man. And there's a lot of wisdom and understanding. And for, for those in the faith and those that read the scriptures, for the Lord to be with you to understand because it's very, very powerful. Uh, it says, Sirach, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, 18 verse 8 What is man And where to serveth he What is What is his good And what is his evil The number of a man's days At the most Are a hundred years <laughs> and, I, and, I, and that's back in the apocrypha That's back in the apocrypha It said And that was That was the scenes of um, King Solomon That was Sirach is, is his sayings. Um, the sayings of uh, King Solomon. Because King Solomon was the wisest, wisest king of the East. He was considered a genius amongst the nations. And rightfully so, because the scriptures have a lot of wisdom and understanding coming from his mouth, which was Yahweh Shah in the reincarnation. You see, so it's a the number of a man's days are most a hundred years. Right, what do you have to be proud about? I mean, where, where, where's this pride coming from? Where's this haughtiness? You're better than people. You're only going to be... The most you're going to live is 100 years. That's to say if, if the Lord grants you to make it that far. And then when you get that old, you're like a baby again. You can't even tend to yourself. So that's why Solomon was constantly rebuking people, constantly rebuking Israel specifically. Why, do, why would you be proud against the Heavenly Father? You're, not, you're nothing. You, your, your life is as a shadow. You see, that's why we do good on earth while we're here. Because we know that it'll pan out. 
not only in a, in a life to come, but now. See? And it says, as a drop of water unto the sea and a gravel stone in comparison of the, so, of the sand, so are a thousand years to the days of eternity. That way right, is nothing. It's very little. Uh, it says, therefore is the most high patient with them and pour forth his mercy upon them. Right? The Lord is very merciful. Because a thousand, cause you only live a hundred years. That's not even a day. That's a that's maybe an hour in in the heavenly heavenly Father's time. You see, that's why He's so merciful to us. And He said He saw and perceived that end to be evil. Therefore, He multiplied His compassion. Right. He He constantly set up the prophets. He gave us the Lord's sacrifice. You see, and then eventually He gave up His Son, because. In order, in order to bring merciful, he had to, he had to stay true to his word, which is the lost of commandments. And it said, the mercy of a man is toward his neighbor, but the mercy of the Lord is upon all flesh. He reproveth and nurtureth and teacheth and bringeth, bringeth again as a shepherd his flock. He have mercy on them that receive discipline. Right, man, because coming in the truth is a thing of discipline. It is primarily discipline. Faith and discipline. Because in order to serve the Lord, you have to be disciplined. Because it's very easy to go off. It's very easy to do wickedness. It's very easy to eat pork or go to the barber. Things like that, man. It's very easy to do that. But when you serve the Lord, he said, He have mercy upon them that receive discipline. And that diligently seek after his judgments. And that's where his mercy comes in. My son, if not that that good deeds neither use uncomfortable words when thou giveth any anything. Right, don't don't give don't give a brother something like, Yeah, man, but remember you're gonna owe me. You know, that make make that brother feel bad. Just give it to him. Yeah, brother, just give give it back when you can, you know. Don't worry about it. Because this is a family thing, it's a thing of brotherhood. Well and the scriptures say, When thou giveth um if even if that man can't repay you the Lord will. And I know the Lord's blessing is going to be more than a little bit of thing I just gave him. You know, gave him my brother. See, I read, no, I said, Shoot, shall not the do as, as words the heat? So is the word better than a gift. Lo, is not a word better than a gift, but both were, both are with a gracious man. Right, man. Uh, uh, appreciate, appreciative man. Okay, but that's not the type of topic, man. It's about you know seek the Lord in you know, the days of our youth and appreciate the things we have, man. Uh, because it all could be taken away. So with that, I want to give a praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, 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 Ba'